Hello, I'm Staff Sergeant Thad Crutcher, and I play the bassoon. Like the oboe, the bassoon is a woodwind instrument and part of the double reed family. It uses a reed similar to the oboe. If you play the reed by itself, it sounds a little funny, maybe even a little weird. When you put it on the instrument, it sounds like this. The bassoon, much like the clarinet, has keys, and it also has holes. It can play relatively low and fairly high, which make, makes it have a wide range. It can play funny things. Or more serious things. And that's the bassoon. Hi, I'm musician first class Renee DeBoer, and I'm here to tell you why I love playing the bassoon. A lot of people have never seen the bassoon before, and the first thing they notice about it is how big and tall this thing is. In fact, when I first started playing the bassoon, this thing was taller than me. What you probably don't realize about the bassoon is, it's a lot bigger than it looks. This instrument is eight feet long. How's that possible? Well, I'll show you. Right here, this is called the reed, and that's where the air starts vibrating. From there, it travels down this tube and down and down and down all the way to the bottom of the bassoon, and then it makes a U-turn and comes all the way back up to the top. So basically the bassoon is a really long instrument that's been folded in half on itself. So what does that mean? Well, that means the bassoon has a huge range. It can play really low and really high and everything in between. about the bassoon though is the sound. To me, the bassoon has a vocal quality, like a human voice. And since I've never been much of a singer myself, when I play the bassoon, I feel like I can really sing out. I hope you've enjoyed learning all about the bassoon today. My name's Amy Harmon and I'm principal bassoon of the Philharmonia Orchestra. The bassoon is a woodwind instrument and you play it by using double reeds, which are so cool because it's two pieces of bamboo tied together and when you blow it vibrates. You then attach it onto this metal pipe, which is called a crook, and the air goes in all the way down and up again. It's got a series of holes which are open and closed by pressing keys, which change the pitch. It's got a very large range and you can play very low. And then also very high. And then everything in between. You control the reed with a combination of the muscles around your mouth and with air that you blow from your diaphragm. Um, and also you put your tongue against it to make an articulation. So if you hit your tongue against it quite hard, you get quite a loud attack. Or you can do a softer one. 
I sit on the back row of the woodwind section to the left of the clarinet and I have the oboe in front of me. I move quite a lot when I play, which I didn't realise until I saw myself on camera and got quite a shock. Um, but I remember when I watched orchestras when I was younger, I always thought that it must be helpful to have a little bit of movement at the start of a note. And it's also helpful with the other members of the woodwind section. Like if you're playing with the clarinet, when you move slightly together, it's easier to get the note starting together. A lot of the colours that you get out of playing the bassoon is with the air. With a faster airflow or a, so, a slower airflow or a lot of air at one time and then less. And with that, you can control vibrato and dynamics and just the character of the instrument, really. You can also play very lyrically on the bassoon. It has a register called the tenor register where a lot of really nice tunes are written and you can play nicely legato and it has quite a singing sound. You need to have very good lung capacity and very good control over your breathing. There's all sorts of exercises that you can do to help that and you always need to empty your lungs and completely refill them before you start playing. It's difficult when you're nervous because you still have to fill your lungs and be able to breathe as if you're relaxed. When you've got a long phrase, you have to work out where you're breathing in advance and take in as much air as you need um, for that amount of notes. Beethoven is probably one of my favourite composers um, for bassoon writing. He writes so beautifully. And he can put you in any section of the orchestra. You can be playing with the horns and then the cellos and then have a really nice tune on all your own. And it's such fun to play. It's quite exhausting, but it's very fun. The bassoon, it's, it's quite a niche market and um, there's one place in Germany that has about six bassoon factories and they all come from the same forest, the wood that they're made from. And they're quite expensive and they have a ridiculously long waiting list. The, where the factory where my bassoon is from, you now have to wait, I think, six and a half years to get a new one. The scene's quite heavy, so you need some help in holding it up. Um, I personally like to use a strap that I sit on and then hook onto the bottom, which is called a seat strap. You can also have slings that go around your neck and some around your back to help you hold it. Uh, bassoons are made of maple, usually, and then covered in silver keys, well, it's silver or nickel plated, and the crook can be all sorts of things. You can have silver or platinum or even solid gold, depending on your bank balance. <laughs>Some important information about Bassoon. It is a member of the Woodwind family. Most performance opportunities include bands, orchestras, solos, and chamber music. Typically, it is not a jazz band instrument. Most families would obtain a bassoon through our school band inventory on an annual rental or maintenance fee. The ideal bassoon student is studious, detailed, and responsible. They like to accomplish homework, chores, and other projects without being told to, and can do that systematically and with precision. They would be likely to learn things or read new books on their own initiative. They would be willing to work on fixing very specific things that require acute accuracy. They would have medium full lips and may have a natural overbite. They can make a face where their chin looks bunched and retract, almost like what you would think of as a Simpsons cartoon character. They can blow a solid, hefty, thick, steady airstream for an appropriate amount of time. 
They have longer, agile finger flexibility, large enough fingers to cover holes without any double jointed issues so their fingers can stay naturally curved. Some bassoon equipment that students should have every day. Two functional handmade reeds on hand at all times. These would be made by a bassoon teacher. A silk swab for swabbing out the main parts of the instrument. A few pipe cleaners for swabbing the inner part of the vocal. A reed case for storing their reeds properly. A seat strap that is used to hook onto the instrument that they will sit on to hold the instrument properly. Cork grease or beeswax is optional depending on what the joints are made out of and it's normally put on by a teacher or with the assistance of a teacher. And optionally key oil. Some things to avoid when beginning bassoon. Attempting to assemble or disassemble the instrument early on without guidance from a teacher. Parts are very delicate and hard to put together at first. Beginning the instrument without first-hand instruction from a bassoon specialist. Trying to play a bassoon without a seat strap. Trying to swab any of the parts of the instrument early on after playing the first few times without the proper guidance from a teacher. Not willing to practice patiently a small chunk of time daily. Chewing on reeds or not properly storing them in between practices or band classes.